Hi guys, welcome back to week three of the Ruby class. And uh, before we start, I just want to get some ideas on the homework. Week homework two. How how does everyone feel about that? Is it easy? Is it hard? Or it's more difficult than homework one? Okay. And what's difficult about? Uh, association. Associations. And how many models do we have? Three? Okay, we, and association is hard. What else is difficult in this homework? Authentication. So, so we learned authentication last week. Are you talking about authorization? Yeah, how authorization and authentication is more difficult because the when I have some function or feature related to our user or message, you can accept a different message about different user and you have. Mm. I think I have to uh, take a long time for this. But the new pundit is the interesting game. Okay, good. So, uh, Hua mentions pundit. That's a library you can add on. Uh, it's a gem that lets you decide if a user can view a certain page. And that's authorization. We authenticate to decide whether a user can sign up or log in. We authorize if we allow user A to see user B's content, right? So we, most of the apps, we have to worry about them. So we will be doing it again and again. Um, it's important to know that homework three, two, by design, is more difficult than homework one. Your most challenging part of attending a, a course with Code School is in week two and week three because you will be learning a lot and try to build a complete app. And when you get to week four, week five, you will be more comfortable and you also start working on your projects for the demo day. So a lot of learning is happening in week two and three. So don't give up, right? It's a lot of uh, work, but all, it's also by design. So if you put in the effort, you can follow through. If you don't put in the effort, then some of you will have to leave the class because you cannot finish it. But, so it's very important to start early and ask us questions. If you're stuck, uh, find ways to talk to us. Mes uh, post, post on Facebook, message Charles or myself, and we can do uh, screen sharing over Team Viewer. We can you know, uh, write up something for you. If you're not clear, we're also happy to do a video, walk through and then send you the video link. So really, the idea is that week two and week three, it can be difficult if you have to spend 20 hours, 30 hours, spend 20 hours, 30 hours. It's very normal. This is, we have the same uh, thing happening in the iOS class and in the US. It's the same. We can only become great engineers if we put a lot of hours, all right? So we can, uh, so good job um, go following through these steps and the most important question is make the time for it and ask us questions. Yeah? Okay, for today's chapter, uh, topic for today is, is on testing. Uh, before we, we start the, the new topic, I'm uh, highlighting a few excellent projects, uh, submissions. So let's take a quick look at them. This is the homework one. And I'm going to open all three at the same time to save time. Do you notice sometimes it's a little slow to load? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you know what, why that's the case? They uh, auto start it off. Yeah, they auto sleep. They shut the dyno off. And when you run it, they will launch the app. So it's, it's like you running Rails server over there. Right, so this is one submission by uh, 
Can you raise your hand? Um, down, right? Yeah, so this is good. We have the cover picture, background cover, CSS, very nice CSS. And let's check out some of the, the features. And in here, we have this, the sorting function. Uh, the count number of views is quite elegant. Um, and then you, you get the pagin uh, pagination uh, style for Bootstrap. So that's, that's nice. The, and you can, of course, place an order. Uh, it's good to also get the all filter, right? Each one of these. So that's a good attention to the details. And the layout, the use of layout is consistent, right? You go from one page to another. Uh, you can maybe make this click on the logo, click on this, go take you back to the home page. Or you can use the home link here. But usually, uh, if you click here to go back to home, that's easier. And here's another one by Hua, right? Uh, also nice look. So we learn to do a website. We have to care both about the look and the function. Uh, and here the def you get the default contact view, the map of the uh, restaurant when you scroll down. And a little creativity here in using the, um, um, the, the columns, the grids, right? Call six. And if, what happens if I resize it? Right, this gets flowed down nicely. So, as we do it, we have to focus on you know what it looks on different screens. So that's a good job. And for this again is very nice because the sections are very clear here. And we actually this one has a few more fancy um, ability. You can have a shopping cart. So if here you can buy many items um, at one time. So in the, in class we only demo buying one item. So this is a little, little more difficult. Um, so you can add quantity and more item to cart, right? And I can, so I, I click back, so this one didn't get refreshed, that's okay. So if I go to the cart, how do I check out? I don't have a view for certain templates. You have to add one more, one more. Okay, let's try that. I like this one, expensive, uh, with load. It's very expensive. So add to cart, and what happens now? Yeah. And I click here. Yeah. Very nice. So check out. And the, what's really cool here is that uh, I also integrate Twilio to get a message to my phone, and it works. So you enter the phone number here, the text message API. You send the request to HTTP request to Twilio, and it sends a message. So that's that's excellent. So I really like it. Also make it look nice and. This is another one uh, by, sorry, huh? And right? And 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 that's um, emailing the order. So you can uh, when you or after you finish order, you get an email, and that's uh, using Active Mailer uh, built in Rails. So, but uh, we have to be careful not to submit the email password to GitHub. And uh, again, this one also has reviews, an optional feature. Uh, sorting is here. I noticed a little interesting touch here where the menu is, uh, the logo is to go down past the navi the header bar. So that's cool. Uh, maybe you can use uh, the same container so that this line, the two of them can be together. I think if I make it smaller, maybe they will be, um, I will see it. So notice when it's small, it disappears. Uh, so maybe it's by design because, you know, you don't want to show it. But maybe here you want a hamburger menu to drop down and let you contact us. Because if I'm on my phone right now, I cannot go to the contact us page, right? Oh, if I scroll down, it works, right? Wait, it, 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 oh, no. it's, it's not here. It only works if you make it bigger. So on my phone, I cannot contact you, right? But it's, again, it's a good, good job. Uh, so those are the three. There are some other good ones. And each week, we will highlight a few good submissions. Uh, thank you for your work. Again, the more time you spend on it, you know, don't be afraid. That's that's really good. Um, so, for last week, we learned uh, authentication, and we mentioned a bit of authorization. And two things that we try to do is registration, right? Sign up, user sign up, and you start with. Where do you start when you go to user sign up? Let's do recap. You go to sign up, 
by visiting what route? Uh, what controller? When you sign up? What action? New action. And when you submit the form, where does it go? Right? So here, when, if you submit, it will go here, right? And what is this sessions for? So when you log in, it go to sessions new. And then when you submit, you go to sessions create. Now, in the lab, we also do one more thing. From on homepage, you also can sign up and sign, log in. Was it confusing? On the homepage, right? We have a form. So on, on the homepage, you can actually create a form. When you click sign in, it go to user create. No, you, uh, sessions create. When you click sign up, it goes to user create. Right? Does anyone remember the homepage on the lab? The uh, dating, coder dating app. So after you have an error, you may go back to the homepage because the form is there. Right? Okay, so later you will learn how to use the same code on homepage and on users new. Some of you use it with a partial. Okay, what else did we learn last week? Yeah, before action. That's great. Yeah, and what is most con um, confusing last week was that how to understand resources syntax. So let me put this on full screen. Hopefully, it's easier to see. Um, I use photo, but it can be user or session, right? This is from the Rails uh, documentation page. And by now, um, we should try to understand this more. Um, when you declare resources photos, that's, we try to create a few RESTful routes. So who here uh, knows what REST is? We mentioned it, R-E-S-T. REST? Yes. Is, have you heard of REST before? Yes. Okay, so it's difficult to explain what it is, right? But REST is just, this, uh, it stands for, there's, there's a word for it, but you understand it's, it tries to make your URL pretty. Right? It makes it easy to understand. So if you look at REST, these are your REST routes. Right? When you go into the routes into Rails, uh, we call them path in here. So when you go to slash photos or slash users, what action is it? What action is it? Index. So we understand this. Uh, do we understand this uh, notation? When I write A, hash, or pound B, what does it mean? Photos here means? Controller. Photos controller. Pound index. Index means? Okay, so, and do we understand get request? What's a get request? You go to the browser, you type a URL, you enter, you press enter. That's, you get a get request. What's a post request? When you submit a form. Can you do a post request by entering the URL? No. No. Yeah? Okay. Uh, if you're from the command line from Terminal, you can do it. So, next, uh, when do we do have a post request? What action? If you post to photos. So, if you remember users create, you post to slash users path, right? Uh, Sessions create, you post to sessions path. Notice it's the same, but it's a post request. So when it's post, post means you make you tell the server that the server allow you to make changes in this one. That's the convention. It means we try to do that. We don't want to change make changes with a get request. Yeah. So we post, we can create. So now we understand this. Uh, and what's What's this, this column, colon right here? It's the parameters, right? So params, uh, parameter for, for this one is built in. So you have ID here. In the URL, how do we have more per parameters? Do you know? With the question mark. 
Yeah, you see this a lot in the URL. When you click on the link, they always send more parameters, right? And this, the only thing that's really confusing here, is called sometimes called patch in Rails three and four. In the past, it's called put. You can now with Rails is is patch. But the idea is that you make changes to an existing record. It means update. If you create something new, use post. If you update something, you use patch. So the idea is if you do put, you update a lot more things. But this is, uh, this is the same in our, in our learning context. And destroy, when did we destroy something? Uh, we, we wrote that in, I'm sorry? Oh, log out, we destroy a session. Yeah, log out, user. You can delete a user or a photo. So here, this one now, does it look clearer to us? It's quite clear, right? We, so these are restful routes. Some of you ask when to use plural and when to use singular. What is singular for photos? Photo without S, right? And that is singular. So the model name is singular. The controller name is plural, always, okay? In, so remember that, always. Now, if you don't use rest, Full routes, then you don't use the word resources. You just use the word get. Remember? Get home index. Yeah. That's when you don't need plural. You can call it home controller, welcome controller, login controller. It's up to you. But when you use resources, you have to use plural. If you don't, we will get very confused when you read your code. Your code will work and sometimes it doesn't work. It's hard to see, right? Now, there is another question here. So, one more time. Plural for RESTful is always plural for user's controller. Singular resource. So, singular, what, have you seen it? Has anyone seen it? If I do a singular resource, I can say resource, photo, singular. But it means I cannot have this because this gives me a list of photos. I cannot get, uh, yes, mainly I cannot get index. And when I do show, I don't have ID. I just show one resource. So maybe this is, you want to do this for user because it's only for one locked in user. When you go to slash user slash edit, that's singular because you know what user it is from the se 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 session. Right, session user ID. But if you want to do it, but my advice is don't ever do it. All right, just don't do it. It's very confusing. So remember, even if you write resource user, always go to users controller. You can have two of these lines in your routes, resource user and re but don't do it. Okay. So we're done with uh, routes. We'll get back to that. So testing is what we covered today. And testing is so popular in Rails that there are so many books written about it. Who here has, um, has written tests before in your applications? In Java or in PHP? Who here wrote tests before? Oh, nice. What is the command, uh, what was the function that we use for test? Assert. Excellent. Anything else? Yeah, assert, right? So. So testing is popular, so just to, sh to show you there is this guy, right? He write that. Why don't I write test? Basically, he write that and he write all this reason. Oh, you know, we writing test takes longer. It's not necessary to build an app. And people use different types to test. We will learn what specs are and assert. So when you say assert, that's assertion. And then, you know, we work alone. Why do we need to write tests for other, or, uh, you know, why do we need to be perfect? We have to build something. So he has good reasons, right? But he writes this so that he can write a book to teach people how to test. <laughs> so you can read through this, oh, I really need to test. So there are very good reasons why you need to do tests. And I, I summarize it here uh, from the Rails uh, API, uh, the f official homepage. So, Rails make it super easy to test, and we do the walkthrough today. 
And in Ruby, because it's so easy to write wrong code, one character is wrong, then it's, you know, your app is wrong and you don't know. That's why Hua shared one uh, gem. Did you mean, like when you type first name, you type, you know, first names, and then it will say, did you mean first name? So there are ways to catch and help you. But with test, it encourages you to protect your code, right? Now in Ruby, if you write the same line again, you want to move it to another method and call that one. What do you call that? Do not repeat yourself. This is dry. But when you do this often, it's so easy to make mistakes. So before you do it, you want to write a test. That's a very good scenario, right? Another way is in Rails, test is so good that you can write a test that say, go to the browser, fill in the email address, press the submit button, get this error. So you can do the whole thing, pretend to be a user, and the code will do everything for you. So that, instead of asking someone to check, you can actually have the test that do that. Even better, it can even take screenshots when it's running the test. So when you look at the test later, or you just want to show your manager, you'd run it, hey, here are the updates, updated screenshots of the app. You don't even need to do anything, just run the test. So tests are very powerful, right? So I, I mentioned the first word here, BDD. Who knows what BDD is? Yeah, so we'll, you will see DD everywhere. But so BDD is behavior driven development. But before we get to BDD, we'll look at TDD. Right? So what is TDD? Test driven development. You write, imagine you need a method, but you know what input you want and you know what output you want. So you write test first and then you run the test, it fails. Like, okay, and then you write. So it, when it fails, we say it, it, it's red, right? When you, now you write the test, and then make it pass, and then that's green, right? And now continue here, we can repeat. It means, no, I'm, this method, it's, it, it does what I want, but I want to make it better. How to make it better? Maybe I write fewer lines of code, or I want to support more, test cases I support more input but because you have a test now you're going to make change and your test is going to fail so go back to red and then you make changes and it goes to green then you don't have to go to the terminal and you have to test a b c d it's always tested for you so it's fast faster for our thinking so now if you do this it's called tdd and the more you do it the the, new, the more new ways you get to become a good, a great programmer, right? But sometimes you don't want to do this. That's okay. Uh, a lot of people say TDD is 100% of the time you have to do it. It's really up to you. If you want to do it 50% of the time, that's up to you. Now, TDD is, it makes you think about what the system does. So you know what a method does and you write tests for it. You can write before or after, right? For example, I have a user model and I have a name method, but in my database, I only have a first name and a last name column. So how do you write the name method? In the user table, uh, in the user model. Yeah, first name plus space plus last name. Right? So you can write a test first and then test the name. So that's TDD, you test what the method does. Now, we talk about behavior. You think about behavior makes you think whether you want to have a name method or not. And then you think, so user, I will want to show the user his name. But maybe I call his, I give him, uh, I call this method English name. Nickname, behavior, you have to specify the behavior before you write the code. So as, you, as we write, we will see that behavior. You think more about the feature. You think about the user requirements. What my user actually think? With, so they use that, BDD. But that's to explain 
the, if you really want to see the differences, but most of the time, don't worry about it. They're pretty much the same thing. If you do TDD right, if you do TDD well, you don't write tests for the methods you don't need, right? If you do BDD well, you write the very good methods that you have to test for, like maybe you call it name, maybe you call it full name, and that's, you know, that's the same. So it's just a different behavior, right? A different uh, name here. And BDD come after TDD because when a lot of good developers say, oh, TDD is so great, some people come and say, no, you are just testing the methods. You don't think about the requirements. No, you have to think more, so you have to do BDD. So that's why, right? It's like you have different religions. So we have many types of testing. We'll cover some of these today. Uh, unit tests. So many of the hands have raised uh, about having done tests before. We know unit test, right? What's a unit test? Can we take a stab? Okay. I just uh, if you don't know it, it's okay. Just shake your head. Can you explain what unit test is? Okay. Good. Okay. So unit test. So let's say you have a class and you want to test one method in that class, or you want to test that class and you have one test for each. Right? It's like a very small test, and you call it unit test. Right? A functional test, because unit, you know, unit's like the smallest right thing. One unit, two unit, uh, and function, functional test. Hua, wow. can you try to explain what functional tests are? You, that's what one function, yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's a function. Uh, so in Ruby, we think about functional tests when it's not um, when you have a model in Ruby. That's unit testing the model. When you have your controller, when you have a controller, sometimes you need to open the model, right? You have to call a model. You have to load some data. So you're not really testing only the controller. You're testing the maybe the view, the model code in the controller. So that's functional test. Right, because it has a function, and you can it has many un units. So integration test is bigger than that. If you test, go to the website, fill in the form, submit. That whole thing just has a lot of components, right? Model view controller all play into that. So you you have that as integration test. If you really like testing, there are so many ways to do testing, and you can read. You have black box testing means you don't care what it does, right? Just throw input and then see what comes out. And as long as you make me happy, in output is what I want. That's black box testing. But white box testing is like, you have to know what's inside to test it. This is in life as well, right? You, you do black box testing in many uh, other things as well. Uh, if you test the phone, that's black box test testing because you, you're not you know, opening it, it up. So performance test is very important too. You want to make sure that the application has the same output that you want when, when you run it many times or when a lot of people use it. And then regression test, regression, can someone guess what regression test is? Yeah, good. So after you refactor, your code changes, but the behavior should be the same. To, to make sure the behavior is the same, that's a regression test. Regression means you don't want anything in the past to go bad. So that's, that's regression. And smoke test is like, you try it you know, randomly, just like some, some, some easy test like, you know, to see if there's smoke or not. See if there's fire in the room, <laughs> we test for smoke, right? But we cannot be 100% thorough about something. There's so many of them. You run parallel tests and security tests and a lot of them, okay? Now, into Rails, Let's learn about two basic things, um, two types of libraries for test. Rails come with a testing framework. It's called uh, unit test, uh, test unit framework. It's run by Minitest. So if you learn Rails in the past, Rails 3 and earlier, it's a different library. But now it's Minitest. So if you want to use it, just search for Minitest you know, uh, API. Right. Today we will learn our spec, and let's let's dive in to mini test first for you to have an understanding. So if you go for an interview, they ask you, "What does Rails come with?" And you, I only know our spec. That's not good. Let's let's know a little bit more. 
we're going to code right now. But before we do that, I want to bring up a, a thing called test environment. What is it? Environment. Have we heard of this word before? Yes. On your machine, what environment are we on? Development, development. on Heroku. Production. When is it in test environment? When you run test, and that's what we're doing. Where is the database for test? Yeah, you can see it in this config database.yaml file. You see it, right? It will say um, coder dating underscore test, your app name underscore test. And what, what you should know is when you run RakeDB like migrate from Rails 4, it automatically bring your test development to the same schema, right? And there are some environment settings. If you want to use your email password in test, right? You can put it under test.rb. If you use an envi uh, development, you can have different settings for each environment, right? So you can put that in the test rb. Don't put your email password in here, right? But let's say if you want a different domain name, different app name, you can put it in this environment specific file. Okay, so with that, let's open our app and I'm going to uh, switch to clone an app. Uh, so, Charles, do we have the homework file here? Uh, we, just, we just need to say we're going to do this app. Okay, so let's try to build in this homework, right, this week. We're building a, an app, uh, a website to let you sell tickets for events. So maybe a ticket box, right? It looks like this. So we create a simple one for us to start. I clone the project. I already clone it. And let's see what I have so far. Um, if you look at the Rails app, where do we want to look first? Oh, good. Routes. So it's in routes, config routes, right? So in this one, oh, can you guys see from there? Uh, oh, it looks like we have something interesting in events. So it lists the events. Where, where else do you want to see? Oh, schema file to know how many model you have, right? Um, how many tables. So where's schema file? DB, schema. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow, we have a lot more. A category, categories table that goes to what model? Category model. Events, go to event model. Region, what's the region? Like Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, event type, uh, ticket types. That's another model. So if you have an event, you have a, a VIP ticket. Uh, general, general, general what? General ticket, right? So that's ticket types. But when someone buy the ticket, you, then it's a new ticket model. And venues, what's venue? Location, right? Okay, great. So I have I have a few models, so that's good. Um, just like any Rails app, it's the same structure. But what folder are we looking at now? If we learn about test. Test folder. Have, have you ever looked into this folder? So we have a few things here. And, and today, so I'm going to just type something, break test. When you re generate a, a project that comes with you, and if you do this, it's like compiling your code. You, know, you run test. It should pass. OK, so we have one test run. Can, can you guys see that? We run break test, right? And only you need to care about one, one test, test run here. And it skipped no test. It, it has no failures. So let's see what test we are running, right? I open the project folder. Let's find the test. So I open each of these folder. So fixtures, we will re revisit that. Each of these Folder. We don't have anything. Okay, I have some in here. So can someone guess why we have these files? Yeah, so when I do Rails generate scaffold, 
uh, maybe. Then I get one in each. But I'm guessing this project, this person did Rails generate model, uh, let's say model event. And then this person said, like, oh, I need to display the event. So I Rails generate controller index. Hello, hello. You there? Okay, so index, so you have this one, right? It generate. And then you just generate the other model. Good, right? That's okay, we understand. But do you think there's anything in the file? So category test, let's look at this file, all right? Nothing, all of them. But it's set up for us to just write the test. So let's, I'm just going to quickly look at each file, event, nothing, nothing. Let's find that, nothing, nothing. So where's the file, where's the test? Oh, this is the controller one. If you read this, does it make sense? Can you guess what it does? It's a controller test. Let's say when you load the index, it should be successful. Maybe you have a test when you go to users, it's not successful, right? Great, so let's write one, one more test ourselves in event, shall we? Uh, if I write a model test, so we learn model test, um, yeah, uh, a category, yeah, let's write a category test. Okay, so category, if I go to the category model, you see that when you create a category, what do you need? Name? Yeah, so who wants to volunteer how to test a name? I'm going to say test. What? Half name. Yeah? Test half name. Category must have name. Good. So how do we, let's, let's, let's think, like some of you have tested before, so I have category, I have to create a new one, right? Category dot new. And if I call save, what else? Assert. So you look at assert true there. So maybe I may want to do something like that. Yeah? So let's say, I want to say test cannot, uh, not, don't save if have name. So anyway, this, that's okay. So do you think this test will pass or fail? Let's try it. So I, I say, I have to be able to save a category, right? So I, I run break test. Let's see what error we get. It just say false because failure, uh, let's, let's read this message. Maybe it's easier to see it from bottom here. So rec test. Oh, this message is not very good, huh? Test, it just say fail, fail assertion. No message given. So you can give a message here, like cannot save, right? Yeah, it say here cannot save, right? But that's that's not good. We want to test. How do we test that? How do how do we make this test pass? Do do you want it to pass or fail? Pass. So I want to say assert. You want this to be maybe like that, right? So if you don't give me a name. I will be false. Make sense? Okay, so this is not Ruby, like I mean this is ugly, but your test will pass, right? Now, what's a better way to do this? We have different assert statement. So, hello, uh, you can, can do more here, but I have to know what it is. So, let's uh, quickly look at the Rails API. These are the assert statements that we learn. So we just need to do a set assert not. Uh, right? So we have one here. When what do we normally need to test? If something is true, something is false, something is what? What's next? Sorry, uh, Anne, right? What yeah, what's what do you test? What value do you normally test? If it's true or false, or number, if number is the same as 
for example, number of tickets is five, right? Here you can see, you can compare to value, or you can test true or false, or you can test whether it's, the, it's nil or not nil. And you can test if one number is in a list. So you have like, you can test whether a group, right? Like maybe breakfast is in one of the list. So we can do that, all of that, but just to give you an idea, that, okay, these are the assertions. And let's, let's just make this test pretty, and then we, we move on. So in, to introduce this to you, I can say assert maybe equal, okay? Assert equals, I say category dot errors. I should have errors because I have validation on name, okay? So I just do it, maybe I make it sure it's equal to one. Do you think the test will pass or fail? You see this one? The error is, is not included in the list. So your name is not included in the list. So if I go to category model, do you see this inclusion? Right? So this is very good. It catch that we can test, you know, the, the validation error. So to make this test pass, I can make it is not included in the list. And now should the test pass or not? Pass. So normally you want to test when it has, have, so here, have name in list, and you can copy and paste to have another, uh, whoops, sorry, here, uh, and add another, right? Now we want it to work, so name, uh, entertainment. Have name in list, have correct name in list, right? So this one will be empty. Does it make sense? You can also, now you can assert, this is true. So I have two tests. So far we only learned very little, but I have two tests. This test makes sure that if you make changes in your category, what happens? Why is it failing? Got, uh, what, what's going on? You got the same? Uh, yeah, so somehow I accidentally lowercase everything. So this is bad, uh, like looking at one computer screen and what else? Is it okay now? What else? Which, sorry, what line number? 10. Oh, this is normal. Yeah. See, your Ruby now is really good. So, same. Okay, so maybe now I, I should pass, right? But now you know how to test. This, so, all the tests pass, and if later you give it to your partner, and your partner is like, no, this shouldn't be entertainment. This should be like rock, right? And then you run the test. Oh, you know who is to blame, right? This, this failed. So you see that it doesn't have colors, it's not very nice, you have to run it each time. So we, let's learn an, the second way to do tests. And that's what we learned today with RSpec. Okay? So with RSpec, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to install RSpec Rails. And it's a library for us to test in Rails. If you use any library, if you download a very good Rails app, you may see a spec folder in the app. And that's because of this guy. So let's do that. Let's add this to your development uh, group. Have, do we know now uh, why this is group development? So when you push to Heroku, this is not installed. Okay, so we want this for development uh, because we want to run it in test and development. The reason we need it in development is because we need the generators. 
aspect give us some generator. Alright, let's go to gem file. Where should we put it? Does it look good here? Alright, let's let's do that. And I'm going to run bundle. Bundle install. That's short for it. Let's see. Now I have some changes. Basically, you see that I added the gem and a few library in, with the gem. It installed our aspect gem and some of these extra libraries you see in gemfile.log. So now when you start in any project, you need to do this. Initialize a spec directory. So let's do that, right? After bundle install, let's sorry, yeah, it's still a little small, but we get it here. And that's it's okay. What it's telling me is I should run bundle exact rails install. So so let's 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 do that. Um, Okay, so I have these new files. Now if we are paying attention, uh, maybe we can try to see the similar things. In the old place, in test folder, we have a test helper. What test helper does is it loads the Rails environment, and then any of these test files can just use the test helper. So it's like a shared Shared file, right? With spec, it does the same thing. Spec helper. And Rails helper just does a little bit more. But our interest is in having something like this. So let's try. If I, this is the first thing you get with uh, our spec. Let me just commit this. I commit this, um, add these files, and I let me commit it at our spec, right? Now we, we have a clean folder. Now let's do, uh, let's try generating a scaffold, person, name, email, okay? Let's, what do you think is going to be different from before? Oh, this is, okay. Now let's try to look at this. It's the same, the same, but do you see this guy? So after I Rails generate, I do the same thing for active record to create the model and the migration file. I also get a new thing. It adds people. You see Rails convert person to people, singular, plural, and then people controller. Remember, always plural. But now, aspect, right? ERB aspect. So aspect adds a generator into your Rails generator. Now you have that. That's cool, huh? So because I'm not using in this app, it's always good to try that, and of course I don't need it, so I'm just gonna destroy it, right? As I put D, okay. Now back to my project. Oh, I have this extra file. I don't want it, but it's okay. I can leave it there. Rails didn't destroy everything. <laughs> it keeps that file. So uh, because you know, um, in case you use scaffold before, it doesn't want to delete that file. So, but I want a file for my for my event, right? Let's test event. I want you to see here, it's the same as the test folder. When you generate, you have controllers folder, views folder, and everything. And it looks exactly the same as app slash views, app slash controllers. That one, that one's clear, right? If you, if you need to find the test file for event.rb in the model, where do you go? We're learning spec now. Where do you go? If I want, yeah. Yeah, spec slash model. Where is it? That's weird. I have model controller. Wait, where's my model? Maybe it's up there? Oh, here. <laughs> it's in. So generator, you have active record generator. And then, yeah. Okay, so it's there, right? Good. So let's do that. Rails. So sorry, I have to use this today. Rails generate. So what we have is actually we can do this. If I press enter, you get the type. You can see the help. So what's this name? Model name. That's all we need to do really. So let's uh, put model name. And you can do the same for controller or anything. So if you add test for 
model view controller we can do that so let's do model for today uh, for for now uh, before the break let's do it for what model Charles should we test event or category okay let's test events and notice we just create the file can everyone see that one it's a little low there so so we create event spec we're going to open that file um, model event okay so it's a little different it loads the Rails helper that's all you don't need to care about but we're going to test the event using this syntax you never have to change anything in first line and, and bottom line but it it's quite clear right what it, what class are we testing we're testing the event class right it's a ruby class model is just one ruby class and it say type model so it knows where to load your event.rb file to test it you have to load it to test so now when i do event dot something it knows right so let's see i want to test and in 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 this syntax this is why they call behavior driven development because now my test reads more like a person reading it so let's look at the event file uh, my event is it belongs to a venue to categories and all that we just tested category let's test event do you want to have an idea what what we want to test we test maybe you test event name or or what okay yeah it's good we can test validate now and it's very similar so I can say describe um, maybe validation on name and in here you can have many tests uh, for for this validation so for example in here I can have a test on maybe um, it does not create uh, without right event without a uh, name so right it means if you create an event dot new you cannot cannot save it and you can do that already let's 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 do it really quickly how do we do it event equals event dot new event save and then what ah now here we we use the syntax that reads more like behavior behavior and that's we call it expect expect something to be equal something so a lot of your tests will be like that but we will learn more you know remember assert assert not assert same we learn expect so now expect so you can put expect event that save to be false yeah how do we run the test? How do we run the test? Yeah, so with R spec, you don't do rig test. You can do rig specs if you want. Remember, test is the folder and spec is a folder. But with R spec, we use this R spec. So R spec spec. Spec is the name of the path. Right? Let's run this. Boom. It works. So now, look, if a friend comes and think no this is too difficult for me to create anything I'm going to comment these guys out he, he want maybe just for fun just to make it easy for him to create new events right he go to rails console and say oh I want to create events so I want to comment this code out he doesn't know that or maybe that friend is you at midnight you are very sleepy but now if I run this test before I submit my homework boom ah so my code is protected because you change something you didn't want to and your test failed right and is it clear why it fails in line 7 right that's important when you say oh it tells you what line it is it gives you the color it's very nice right so how do we make how do we make this test pass again we have to return the code for it right so my code should be over here so maybe very simple we go back to test driven development if you never wrote any of this code you can do validate presence 
of name and then you run this test it passes so that's up to you whether you want to write test first or code first okay let's do something a little bit more interesting in here so this error actually it see a lot of validation over here it actually failed because of many validation so that's why it's useful for you to say right event.save here and you can say event.errors on name right to be equal something and again because you don't know what it is it's a good way to cheat right by testing that and actually do you think this test will pass or fail fail who say pass who say it will fail fail right let's look at this file let's look at this file validate presence of extended HTML description venue category starts at and validate uniqueness of name blah 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 so it's gonna fail or pass oh it fails but if I change you to this it it passes but do we want it to pass no something is going on like you cannot create an event without name so you realize we validate uniqueness of name but we don't validate presence right okay so ah so this code you actually want to put presence in here right that's when you catch because when you have a lot of validations it's very hard to see what you're missing until until you put in the test and like oh okay right so when you come back to your code a month later if you read this this file it's not easy to read but if you read your test it's very easy to read because it reads like English reads like behaviors that's why it's called behavior driven de development now I'm going to quickly say that's validation let's test something more interesting usually you don't want to load too many things so I have event name how do I get event name in here can someone implement this code for me ah uh, no not event name I'm so sorry I need the venue name how do I do that okay so you don't have need the word self if it's a dot name right so now how do I test this describe we'll do this and then we break for five minutes I'm testing the method venue name this is getting interesting now what if I don't have a venue should the code crash no maybe not right so if do you see a validation of event here no right um, venue here well not really so if you accept an event without a venue because maybe step one the user create an event but the event is not public right you let the user keep the event empty so the user can enter some other information so you can save it to the database when the user say launch this event you're like no 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 now you need a, a venue but that's not validation right that's uh, because you already created in Rails you can actually validate on update validate on create if you want but for this purpose I don't want this to crash let's let's run a Rails console and do it event dot new whoops event equals event dot new now I'm going to do event name uh, no venue name so, so sorry I keep missing it up venue name what happens crash but console again if I do event dot venue venue equals venue dot name venue dot what new name is uh, maybe stadium right now event dot venue name does it crash stadium that's what we want and what we want if there is no venue we should want it to not crash and give you nil for example that's behavior so my behavior here is I'm doing test driven now I write the code first just now we validate we write validation first but now we write the code first and we write this method so 
imagine I describe venue name it return venue name venue name that's quite silly right uh, but it's important to have this task uh, so let's do that uh, returns when there is a venue okay so how do we do that when we type out our test now event equals event dot new there is a venue venue equals venue dot new name is venue what else uh, event dot venue equals what venue now you expect event dot what are we testing so this expect now is the same as this that is the method that we are testing venue name it not to equal what venue you can just do that your test should be easy to read don't be clever don't write your test with, with algorithms right no just make it if your wife reads this or if your mother reads this she can say hey honey is your code correct so here should be venue venue are super clear I'm testing this behavior and now if I run this test well not that test how do I run the test uh, spec what spec you can also run only models test you can also just run this file it's the same right um, okay uh, what's going on hmm I wrote that incorrectly I can't blank terrible English so let's fix that can't see sometimes this is called there's a bug in the test right that's why you don't write tests maybe because if you try to fix bugs in your code and you run and you have bug in the test that's just more work but <laughs> but try not to have bug in the test by writing really simple um, simple test right okay let's see venue name undefined so that's step one remember red green green red green so let's do that so I I do it here def venue name nothing I just return nothing and if I run now what we don't get this error right what do we get yeah to avoid bug each time we write and run test write run test it's a very good practice you can make this automatically run every time you save the file we can do that later so expected venue right how do you make this test fast easy right I just put venue in here boom happy but you know then okay so maybe I need another test to make sure that my code is good so it's always okay to write stupid code but if you write good test your code will become smarter and smarter so now it should return nil if there's no venue uh geez so hard to type venue in okay so event is new and expect event.venue name what do you want it to be nil or m or blank nil huh because it's just like okay no event nil all right so your test become better your code has to be, become better too so now it's say you want this to be nil but you give me venue so how do we make it work oh that's that's hard huh so if you have venue so you say if venue then you return that if not you return nil yeah is that okay and your test pass and you have me again red green red green red green but now you if you have two events you can write another test for event one venue event two like venue B and then this will fail basically that's a very silly example but it allows you to refactor your code remember my tests are still good right so now I I just do this if someone just is clever and just put everything to one line and now I run the test does it pass or fail pass so it, I know this code is not worse than the previous code in fact this code is the best code that we can write but 
to understand this, we can get here by saying, oh, in Java, you can do that. Oh, if venue is that, right? Uh, you can do maybe if there's venue, then you do venue.name. If not, this is called the tannery operator. It's the same. This will work. And you run. Imagine how happy you are. You can change your code easily and you learn Ruby faster if you have your test. Now, someone say, no, that's not good. You can do this faster by doing, you know, if what, what I just did there, right? What I just did with the try. So, try is a method in Ruby. In Rails, Rails give you active support, gives you this. Uh, an ad additional try method, like present, question mark. You used that before? Present, try. Try is, if this is nil, it just returns nil. If it's not, then do this. This is only use it for very, very simple cases. Do not use it for like, oh, try, and then like, you know, this is going to be nil, and then like, cannot. It's just too much. It was too much to read. And you are abusing uh, the magic. It will make it harder to read. So, uh, for remember, there are other people who read your code, right? Okay. So with that, um, we'll take a break for five minutes. Yeah.